Hey everyone, welcome back to Q&A, joined with Murray. Um, man, I thought it was a timely sermon. Um, having genuine love that isn't on the surface, or the Southern culture love, mm. is really difficult. Uh, very convicting in a lot of ways, and maybe how I hide, right, behind a veneer. But um, before we maybe get in a few questions, why don't you remind the listener? Yeah, so we talk about Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 13. And I guess I didn't say this quite this way yesterday, but I guess in some ways it's kind of like, you know, when you have family, kind of a family meeting, this is kind of family meeting talk type mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, what does it look like to love one another within the body of Christ? And then specifically uh, within our within our congregation. Um, and we talked about, uh, all the different things that Paul calls us to love, sincere, committed, others first, enduring, actionable, those things are all a reflection of the way that Christ loves us, which is where we both get the model and the enablement to do what we're called to do. So when I was listening to it, I think a little bit of maybe the sadness I have seen in uh, maybe the Christian culture is how quick uh, and we're not necessarily like cancel culture uh, within our own mm-hmm. uh, body, but how quick we are to not pursue reconciliation and to just move on to something else. Um, maybe speak into how, with real genuine love, right, you're, you're really creating, providing new opportunities in the future of that pursuit of reconciliation and seeing the Lord work rather than when you just give up on it. Yeah losing out on that. Yeah, it certainly feels in the moment easier to walk away from opportunities for reconciliation when you've been wronged. But the reality is it's actually much harder and much more damaging both to you and that person in the long run and short run. Because what you're doing is you're, if you've been wronged and, or you've done and you've done that you've committed the wrong and don't go and reconcile or at least don't go to attempt to reconcile a root of bitterness is cultivated or sown and then a continued refusal to kind of go and address the situation cultivates that root of bitterness on the other hand if we love as Christ loves us when we go to someone and say hey look uh, either this offended or hurt me, or when I did this, I'm sure it was offensive and ugly to you. Um, We're actually more of who we're intended to be, more like Christ. Um, We are in some ways, I don't know if this makes sense, we're more lighter, more more free, and uh, uh, free from the weight of the burden of bitterness, if Mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and bitterness is a is a real heavy weight. Oh yeah, uh, uh, entirely corrupting. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I guess now the question that we had someone submit to us, uh, kind of piggybacking off this, is, well, are there limits uh, to genuine love? And you know, what do we do if if we've been wronged, um, or maybe we've wronged someone and we're trying to pursue that reconciliation? The ball's in our court, mm-hmm. um, but. What if there's still like this fear or concern, like I'm about to walk into this situation and maybe cause more hurt to myself, but Mm. do I still need to do that? Like, yeah, are are there limits? Yeah. Okay. So just as I'm, just as we talked about a little bit earlier and just sort of thinking about it now, the answer is both no and yes. So in God's economy, there is no limit to his love. So there's no limit to God's love. We can, uh, God is never um, at a deficit of love and mercy toward us. However, we are not God. And um, there are, there are certainly some occasions when someone has wronged us in such a way uh, or in such a repetitious kind of way that it would be detrimental to continue to kind of put ourselves under, um, what's the best way to say that, John? Under, uh, given the opportunity to be continue to be hurt again and again and again, that would be unhealthy. Yeah, there's a sense of, I, if I know I'm in this situation, this is a very probable likely outcome and yeah. not 
You yeah. Don't, don't put yourself in that situation. And I think God's word throughout the Old Testament uh, is is clear in the commands that He gives God's people that protect the vulnerable. So I think we see God's character that is bent towards protecting the vulnerable. So if we find ourselves continually being uh, at the hand of abusive behavior, then we ought to consider: Is this, is, you know, is is it worth for me to continue to go and sort of put myself at the hands of, of abusive behavior? But for the most part, and in most ordinary circumstances, uh, whether we've done the wronging or we've been wronged, it's it's our move to go and say things aren't right, and um, and they need to be. Yep. We're to live at peace as far as it depends on us with all with all people. Yep. I think, too, in those situations of saying, like, the opportunity to pray through that and asking for discernment and wisdom yeah. and, and kind of the timing and, and sometimes feeling like, a, you know what, if if today didn't feel right, like, that doesn't mean there's not maybe tomorrow yeah. or, you know, but, um, but you know, obviously asking the Lord for wisdom and discernment on that. And yeah, he, he leads in that way. Certainly. So. Uh, well, that was a great question from a listener and uh, a great sermon that I, I, I did. I found really time, timely and just examining my own heart. Um, yeah, and I think in particular, um, the, the, in the after wave of the pandemic, when it was so much about me, 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 and when um, it is easy to lose commitment mm -hmm. to the body of Christ, to one another, I think it's a it's a challenging word that Paul gives us in Romans to say, what does our love really need to look like to be committed to one another? Mm -hmm. We took vows to love one another, to serve one another, to care for one another, and uh, and how can I be faithful in those? Yeah. Absolutely, and God wants us to be faithful in that because He wants to use us and show yeah. more Himself uh, to us and His grace and mercy, and so uh, that's worth pursuing. Amen. Well, as always, thank you uh, for just your support of Cobble Park. We thank you for uh, listening to these uh, videos and uh, our sermons as well and just being able to get questions. And if you have questions that you hear on a sermon or just a topic in general, we would love to discuss here. Thank you.